Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about simple CDD. And I've already talked about this a lot on the channel. I have a video on it already. And it's a tooling to create uh, auto install images. And in this case it's Debian and I run a lot of Debian both at work and at home and I need some way to install them quickly and install a bunch of them so I can do tests and so on. So this is something that I really need and the images I have been running so far has been Buster and then I have upgraded them to Bullseye. And now I, when Bookworm is out, I really wanted to create a Bookworm image so I could skip all the update steps. So let's switch over to my screen here. And here we have a Debian build environment, which is a default Debian install, nothing extra extra. Uh, just what comes with my uh, build environment. I will install simple CDD here. It's already installed because I've run this a couple of times. This is an... A bookworm upgraded system that is important that you have the right version that you want to create images from or to so in this case we all want to create a bookworm version so I've upgraded it to bookworm and uh, next up we will look at these different files here we have an image directory where the images that I created will be stored we have a temp directory where the uh, mirror and all the Debian packages will be downloaded to so Keep in mind that this build server will need some space because it will download a bunch of different dependencies that are required uh, in order to build your CD. And then we have the profiles where my profiles will be in and the simple CDD configuration. So let's look at that first. Here we have some simple settings. First off, I wanted to set a boot timeout and a boot default. The boot timeout is actually divided by 10. So I've put 50 here, so I have five seconds of boot uh, wait. And then we will have my profile, and my profile is the auto profile. We set the locale to EN US and keyboard to SE. That is important for me because I want to have English spoken to me, but my keyboard layout is the Swedish one. And then I earlier tried to set a bunch of different mirrors here, but it didn't really work with the Swedish mirror or the Danish mirror or even with the German mirror for some reason. So I just used the standard deb.debian.org and that works just fine. It will probably actually DNS wise propagate to some local mirror anyway, but it didn't work with one of these. Next up, we will set the settings for what we will download. So we will have, want to have contrib packages. We want, don't want the non-free packages and we want just one CD. So one ISO image in my case. And the size limit, I put that to a really large number. It doesn't really matter how large. I don't want it to split it up in multiple uh, ISO images. I put a really large number here. And then we have this export setting for what it will run. So my pre-seed file should be CD-ROM simple CDD my pre-seed. So that is the pre-seed uh, directory. All extras, these are the files that it will be added extra. So my downloads, my executables, my packages, my pre-seed, my UDEPs, and my post install. And so let's look at uh, my profiles directory here. If I can get out uh, profiles. So here we have my downloads first. And in this, we will have a bunch of different things that are already defined by the uh, documentation of um, uh, the uh, simple CD. D. And here we have the grub uh, and grub ifi. We have the popularity contest and console setup. All these are required by uh, the, 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 <coughs> the installer. Um, USB utils, APCD and eject, so power management and eject. And then we have the Debian installer LVM. So for disks, we will have LVM, MD admin and crypt setup. And we will also support some extra file system here. We will have RazorFS, JFS and XFS progs for file system uh, management. And then we will have uh, the bootstrap. 
so we can do that from the images and but a busy box is also good to have and we will have syslinux and isolinux also required by this debian uh, cd command and last but not least we will have sudo and i have added zstd and that was required uh, to get the image to actually work when i had a swedish image uh, or swedish mirror i'm not sure if that is required now So next up we have my excludes and here we will just exclude the console uh, setup 3 BSD. We will not use that. My packages is just less. Less is very nice to have in your system so you can actually uh, look at files um, without editing them. And then we will have my post install. Currently I haven't gotten that, this to work but it will uh, pretty much just create an SSH dir and add some authorized keys. I just changed this to being executable, so it might work now, I don't know. Uh, my udeps is pretty much empty, doesn't really uh, add anything, but it's a required file. So my pre-seed, this is where the configuration comes in. So here we have all the things that we need during the setup process. So the Debian installer locales king here, we have the Configuration key map SE. Next up, we'll have the bootloader. Only Debian, other OSS is uh, accepted. The default boot device. We will force uh, UFI extra removable and update VRAM is good to have. We will accept non uh, FE file systems or non FE systems. And then we will set this task select to nothing. So we will not uh, have a desktop environment, we will not install a web server, print server, DNS server, file server, mail server, or a SQL server, or anything like that. We will just have a clean, a simple setup. But the package select can also include some extra things, so we want to have an SSH server and the build essentials. So these are checkboxes in this uh, include. You can look at the list of things that you could add extra if you want and then add more if you want here. Uh, popularity contest, I've set that to true, so we can have more statistics for the Debian people. Um, we have the Debian installer exit here. Uh, before I run this uh, reboot progress note, so it will actually reboot the image and come up again. But if I want to create a bunch of these, I actually want the script to create one at a time. And it will just hang and not continue with the next machine if I don't power it off. So I've changed that to true here. Uh, UTC is really good to set. So we have uh, the right timestamp uh, zone. And then my time zone is Europe Stockholm, of course. I will use an NTP server. Really great to have great um, times and uh, get the clock updated automatically. Uh, partition, uh, I just want a regular setup, so I don't want uh, LVM or crypto on my drives at the moment. And LVM partman uh, confirm this is just so we get this automatic flow. We doesn't want, we don't want any extra questions. Um, choose uh, scripts. I select home. Um, so this is uh, also another part. Uh, install drive, confirm write label and uh, par partition select finish and confirm true. So everything of this is just set. Yes, yes, yes. Just install everything. Use the whole drive. Don't do any extra settings or anything like that. Just go for it. Uh, confirm no uh, overwrite true. So overwrite any partition because we know that this is a clean drive. So it doesn't really matter. Confirm, 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 confirm. Everything, just confirm it. Uh, Debian on, Grub installer Debian only. So we have that again here, some more bootloader things. Um, I think that we don't really need that this part here. I might have added them twice. Doesn't really matter, it's the same values. Um, and then down here, CD-ROM, uh, ought to be set, set CD-ROM set, set first. So don't go to the CD-ROM to get packages. Uh, Try to actually reach out for a mirror uh, for the um, as a default, and we see here that I've created the mirror 
I just say manual setup for the mirror, don't really care about the country, and then run deb, uh, Debian org, and this is the directory Debian, don't have any proxy string. So this is just so we will be able to download more packages. Uh, then we have mailer config here, I haven't really set up a new mail server, don't really need an exim uh, mail server at this point. Um, and then we have some notes here. So here you can add some extra notes to inform uh, about the uh, reboot process and so on. Uh, I haven't said any extra information there. And then we have this precede early command uh, string. Um, Anna install and simple CDD profiles. So this will probably be for it to read the other profiles here. And then we have the user setup. And this is a little bit of a change here. Uh, I want to have uh, the root login not available. Uh, so I don't want it to be able to log in as root, but I want to have a user and then be able to sudo from that user. Uh, I want to set up the root password to root me. And this is um, not allowed anymore. I can't just set the password like this. You need to create the password like this with the encrypted password. And there is a documentation where it says how to create this string. It's pretty much what's uh, set in your password file. So if you have an available system already, you can just pick that here or read the documentation and run that script. Um, and the same goes for the user down here. So we have user full name down in person, wooden, and then we will have this encrypted password down here. So um, that's pretty much it. When it comes to this, we can see if I maybe have the command for creating. So what you need to do in order to get the password is to app install who is. So that is another package. And then you can run mk password with the SHA-512. Uh, and then you can enter your password here. And it will give you this string. So this is the string that you will use in your seed file later on. So when we have done this, we can run our configuration. And what we will do is run this configuration with the debug flag. And I will see, show you why later on. So here I will run this script and I will say debug. And with that configuration file, it will tell us a bunch of different things here. So now it has created this image. And we see that it has done a bunch of different things uh, above here, but we will look for the string up here where it says that this has run uh, XOR R ISO with a bunch of parameters. So I will copy this because this is something that I will reuse later. And after that, I will enter a directory called uh, temp cd build bookworm. So this is where the actual um, the directory where the actual cd is built into. And then I will edit the boot one iso linux menu configuration. And this is a part of the menu men, menu that it actually used during the boot up process. And in this file. At the bottom, there is two extra configuration files here. One is called SPK GTK and one is called SPK uh, config. Yeah, two different ones and these are for speech. So this is a speech available setup in your menu. And if you don't remove these, they will set a 30 second limit and add an extra option of speech install. And that will be your option if you don't do any key presses, which is not the default and will not do the auto install for me. So I really need to remove these. So I've commented them out and now we can run the uh, build CD process again. So now it will just run through this and build a new ISO for me. Next up, I will download this ISO to a directory where I put all my ISOs. So I've done this a bunch of times. So let, let's just download it down here. And then I will look so I don't have any old uh, 
set up, but I have this script here that runs a bunch of different commands against um, against VirtualBox in order to set up a new machine, add this ISO file. Uh, look at the older video, it, I don't, haven't really changed anything from that video, just made it work in Linux. So when we run this, it will create a new machine, it will start it up in VirtualBox, and it should go past the first screen now. So now as you see, it will automatically boot in five seconds. If we don't have this, we will have the speech option and it will not start up automatically. So this is now running and should be a fully automatic install of the full system with all the options set. So now we have run it through and it has installed everything and it's now a fully working system and shut off. So let's start it up again, see what IP we get and if the extra, extra script step there where um, I added the keys worked this time. I don't, I don't think it will but let's try it. Um, so it should be pretty quick to boot a Linux system here. Mm, there we go. And let's log in. See that we got the right password set for this user. IP address. We got 36. So let's go to SSH 136 36. And we already have used that IP, very common. And add that fingerprint. Oh, it worked! So it actually was able to create this SSH uh, with the authorized keys. Uh, that's pretty cool. So now we can also have a post install with a script make sure that it's executable, but you can have a post script where you can add extra things and, and get an environment where you just can log into it. So this will help me a lot in my setup here so I can get a bunch of different servers set up. And uh, when I'm doing these kind of experiments with different clusters and so on, then I might need a bunch of different uh, machines. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues, and I really hope to see you in the next video.